All right, guys, what's up? I'm Jonathan Williams. And I'm Eric Lampkins II. And we are here live in Eaglewood, California, where the Los Angeles Rams are getting ready to scream Kingfish, an indelible story of Kenny Washington, one of the first black men to reintegrate the NFL. Yeah, let's check out the action, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. You have seen him on TV on ESPN, but he's currently a writer for the LA Times. LZ, we're here at the premiere of Kingfish, the story of Kenny Washington. What will you take from his legacy? Wow. I think the biggest thing for me is the fact that it wasn't well known and what that means. You know, we, over the last couple of years, have been combing through our history in this country and discovering a lot of these stories, right? the beach that was taken away, the towns that were destroyed. And now Kenny Washington, who, you know, free Jackie Robinson in the heart of Reconstruction and Jim Crow breaks through like this, and the story goes unknown. So the first thing I think about is, this was kept from us. And now that we got it, let's amplify it so that more people can know about his life. So Kenny would have never seen a lot of day in the NFL if it weren't for black media members. As a black media member, how are you leveraging and utilizing your voice uh, to, to push these types of stories forward? Well, I would tell you, so Bob Gobner, the, the co-author of the book, the other guy is, is, is Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn and I are boys. Keyshawn told me about this story, about this book, and I immediately wrote about it. So as soon as I found out about it, I used every platform I had, podcast as well as my uh, column in the LA Times, tell this story. And that's just how I am. When I discover information I think the public needs to know, you know, especially as it pertains to, to black people, because that's what I'm here for, um, I'm going to run, run tell that. So as soon as I found out, that's exactly what I did. And what advice do you have to, to young black journalists as they begin to navigate their careers? Talk to the old folks. You know, yeah, you're right. Um, you understand technology better. Um, you're probably more nimble out in the field with phones and, and TikTok and all of that, and that is fantastic. But you weren't there. And the sources that you need are right there in your neighborhoods, in your churches, in your barbershop. So relish where we are in terms of technology and advancements, but don't forget where we came from. And that those stories and those voices are all around us. We just gotta talk to the talk to the souls that were there. 
I appreciate it. All right, what's up, guys? I'm Jonathan Williams with the Talk of Troy. I'm with Jonathan Franklin of the Los Angeles Rams. UC uh, Los Angeles Rams, excuse me. UCLA, great. Uh, I'm a Trojan guy. So. Oh, oh, <laughs> So how does it feel to be out here and see everybody celebrating Black History and celebrating Kenny Washington? It's, it's powerful. You know, so many times we talk about how can Black History Month be 365. And releasing this film tonight, the premiere, we, we give it that opportunity to take the screening around, to educate individuals of the hero of Kenny Washington and have a dialogue talking about the barriers, the hope, and the celebration, right, and the path forward. So tonight was incredible and really excited for the next step to move forward. What do you think this film means for young black men and young black women who want to play football or any sport, you know, really? It's hope. You know, you, you think about the barriers that Kenny had to face, the thoughts that he had to battle, the fear, the doubt, the insecurities. And many times he had to look within and keep going. The, the opposition amongst his teammates, the community, the opposing teams, the leaders amongst the NFL. And Kenny kept going, he kept running because of individuals that look like me, right, that look like him. He was a trailblazer that we all needed. And, and, and Kenny gives us all hope that in the midst of the barriers and the challenges that we have, we can always hold on to hope to keep moving forward. And when someone watches this film, a young black, you know, young black man, young black woman who watches this film, what would be your hope for them when they see this? To, to always know they're enough. You know, Kenny believed that he was enough in the NFL. He was an LAPD officer. He was a Hollywood actor. And although he wasn't the first, you know, in law enforcement or an actor, he was a, one of the few. And yet he always knew he was enough regardless of what environment he walked into, the opposition, the doubts, the fears. He believed that he was chosen. And because of that, he can inspire so many people to embrace who they are each and every day. And then lastly here, What's next? I mean, what's, what are the next steps with this? I mean, how can people find it? Yeah, to show the world. We'll, we'll come up, we'll, we'll post to our, our social and digital channels of how to have access to the film and how to bring the film to your school or the community. And we're excited to put that plan together and announce it to the world. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. I'm here with Kisa Washington here, uh, granddaughter of Kenny Washington. So, first things first. How does this feel to see all these people come together and really celebrate your grandfather tonight? Wow, it feels amazing. I mean, just being out here with the community and all of the love that they're showing my grandfather, the recognition and the shine is very, very important. And we're honored and privileged to be here. Yeah. What does this mean for your family? Oh, wow. It means, again, being recognized, being heard, being seen. We are proud to be able to um, continue Kenny's legacy and making sure that his story is never forgotten. I see you have a big check here. <laughs> I mean, what does this mean for you? What does this mean for the foundation? I mean, uh, yes, this yeah. is awesome because again, who knew that they were going to name me as one of their playmakers? But again, the Rams is an awesome organization. They do things when you're not even paying attention because I didn't know that they were paying this much attention to me. But um, for them to recognize what I do at our nonprofit and to contribute to the cause and to further our student athletes is 100% an amazing feeling and awesome. Yeah. Oh, if you're a young person aspiring to play football, whether you're black, brown, white, green, purple, I hope that Kenny's story inspires you to continue to run, continue to fly, and continue to be strong for your community and for future generations for the sport. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Yes. I appreciate this evening. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Fight on. Go yeah. UCLA. Just go to college. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. I can dance this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, what up? You know who it is. It's your, it's your guy, Elam, here with my, with my main man, Sam Hawks, co-founder of the Black Originals and director of Kingfish. So, Sam, I got to ask you, why they call Kenny Washington Kingfish? Man, so in the beginning of the film, Kingfish, big fish, small pond, a leader, trailblazer, he just embodied the full spirit of what you would think of when you think Kingfish. Got He's you. Man. Got you. So, in learning the story of Kenny Washington, what will you take away from his legacy? One of my favorite things, Kenny got signed, and he brought his homie, 
Woody Strode on. I think that's a testimony to African Americans in this country, just worldwide. The way it's like, okay, well, I can eat, but I'm gonna make sure my family eat. I love stories I hear and tell me I'm free, but I'm going back for somebody else's freedom as well. So with the gentleman's agreement, with the league, not having black players for that time period, Kenny to come in and say, okay, also sign Woody Strode as well. That's, that's me, I embody that spirit as well. We work with Lloyd Vigils, an incredible production team out of North Carolina. I lived in LA for five years. I know people in production. Jasmine and I, my partner, we could have got an LA-based company, but we knew how important it was to bring somebody with us from home. So, you know, I know Kenny wouldn't have ever got to the NFL if it weren't for black media members. Yes. So I got to ask you, as a black storyteller, how important is your voice? It's the, most, it's the most authentic voice who I believe can tell the story. I love being a black storyteller. I love black storytellers before me. I'm an old nerd. I collect black newspapers and everything. So, I, again, I stand on the shoulders. I never forget that. I'm, I remain humble because I know the people that came before me that's done this. I'm no uh, Spike Lee, the name, the big names. Yeah, I'm none of these people. I'm still working. I'm honored by the work that they did, and I'm just trying to fill those shoes and continue to push it forward. So you're not Spike Lee yet. Yeah. But you're on your way. That's what I'm doing. So I gotta ask, what's next for you? What's next? Man, get home safely. As far as projects, we're working with some different clients on some stuff that's not film-based. We're a full creative agency, so we do clothing, we do design, a lot of graphic work. Film base, we want to make sure this story gets the notoriety that it needs. Spread it across the world, so we'll be doing press, we'll be doing a lot of stuff for the weeks to come, and then from there, just stay tuned. We got a new website that just launched, theblackoriginals.com, check us out. We'll Last see. question for you. What, what advice do you have for uh, budding journalists, budding filmmakers uh, who aspire to be where you are? Man, we in LA right now. I don't feel like I said this enough. Rest in peace to the great Nipsey Hussle. Never give up. On the week up leading up to this moment, I did like a seven day recap. I'm not big on social, like sharing and stuff, but just my journey and creative things that I've did. And, and a lot of people I say were big stuff, but it's just like, bro, keep going. Stay true to yourself. But that's always tricky because you evolve, you grow, you learn. So who is true to you? But know you can do things with integrity stay true to that, do things with integrity, and that you love, even if within that moment, never forget where you come from, why you're doing something, and never give up. I just didn't give up. I went through every emotion. I've been up at four o'clock in the morning, couldn't sleep. I've cried, I've done it all. So just, just never give up. I mean, not to be long-winded, everybody wanna be Spike or Michael Jackson. Can you do what you love to do for your life? Can it pay your bills? Maybe you're not flying PJs, maybe that's not what it was meant for you to do, but I'm doing what I love. So. Hey, you heard it. I'm here with the boss hawk, Sam Hawk <laughs> himself. Yes. It's your guy, E. Lamb. The marathon continues. Fight on. Peace, brother. Alrighty, guys, that'll do it from the Kingfish premiere here, hosted by the LA Rams at the Miracle Theater in the city of Inglewood. Yeah, I'm Jonathan Williams. And I'm your guy, Eric Lampkins II. We'll catch you on the next one. Fight on. Fight on.